Good evening and welcome to the Thursday evening service at Hegwish Baptist Church. Tomorrow starts the 26th Men's Leadership Conference. Tonight is our regular Thursday night service. My name is Dennis Rosa. I'm a member of the Hegwish Baptist Church. I originally was scheduled to speak Friday with the opening message at the, uh, at the men's leadership. I was asked if I could bring it forth on Thursday. I said, I'll do my best, and here I am. I found out about this maybe five weeks ago, which should have given me plenty of time to prepare the message. Unfortunately, procrastination, uh, passivity, and uh, I'm going to get to it, and, get, and I really got to it today. So uh, the message is, is ready, but uh, yes. In college, I learned how to cram. Uh, this message was in the preparation stages, but it's not prepared till it's finished. It's not ready to serve till it's finished. So I knew about this message five weeks ago. I thought it might be Friday, and then it was changed to Thursday, which was fine. But the point I'm trying to get across is God knew every individual that was going to be here today. And he had purposed for you to be here today. He had purpose for me not to speak tomorrow and speaking today. This may, message may not be what you think you need. Uh, as the brother was asking me after every Sunday service, Pastor Worley be speaking, he says, how was the message? I said, oh, it was good. He says, uh, what did you get out of it? I said, oh, it was a good message. I really enjoyed it. He's asking me Sunday after Sunday, and, he, and I finally says, why do you keep asking me? I says, the messages are good. He says, they're for you. I, I thought the message was for someone else out there. Uh, I didn't realize that the Word of God brings forth the message. By us, faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We have to be expecting to be healed tonight, tomorrow, in the future. We have to be expecting that our prayers are going to be answered, that we're praying for family members and loved ones. We have to be expecting... Tonight may be the night we get delivered of the, the worst demon that's possible within us. But we, we can't come not expecting. We have to expect God to do what he does best. What he does best is create miracles in our lives. He's created about 40 miracles right here. You are saved. You're in the house of the Lord. You're spending a Thursday night coming with expectations of change in your life which is a promise of God. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You're going to hear the word of God, which is the laws of God. So today you have been selected, not by me, but by God, to hear this message. So receive it. The word of God shall not return void. It shall accomplish that which he pleases and prosper wherein he sends it. He's sending it to you and to me. I'm hearing my own message. The title of tonight's message is The Fruit of the Wicked is Sin. If you would turn with me, please, to Proverbs 10.16. Proverbs 10.16. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. Again, the labor of the righteous tendeth to life. We bring forth new life. By bringing forth Jesus Christ through our testimony, through prayer, we may have raised people from the dead, not the physical dead, but the spiritual dead. By you introducing Christ to someone and what Christ is capable of doing, you've given life to an individual who had a dead spiritual life. So we have raised people from the dead spiritually by bringing forth the truths of Jesus Christ. If you would turn with me to Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these the fruit of the wicked, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, 
fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, they that which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This should be our past life. For some of us, we may still be involved in some of these areas, but for many of us, we could probably check mark all of these as part of our past performances. Praise God, we're not where we used to be, but there we are where we are today. In Galatians also, we are called unto liberty. If you would look at Galatians 5, 13 through 16. 5, 13 through 16. Word of God tells us, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all of the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 515. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. The wicked consume each other at some point. Violence uh, is a part of the wicked person's future. They are constantly being involved in <clears throat> Situations that produce violence. This is, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We are to walk in the Spirit. How do we walk in the Spirit? With the help of the Holy Spirit by making sure that we acknowledge our needs by petitioning prayer that we reach out, we have not because we ask not. Seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. We have to bring our needs to God the Father through Jesus Christ. If you would turn with me to 1 John 2.15, please. 1 John 2.15. We're told not to love the world. Love not the world. In our past, we loved the world. We were part of the world. We anticipated the world. We floundered in the world. Now we come into Christianity. Christ is our Savior. And we're told, love not the world. So we have to change our mind, our heart, and our will so that we can conform to what God wants for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John 2.15. 1 John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world, but is of the world. Pride of life. Uh, as youngsters, we're taught to be prideful. We're taught to be overachievers. We're taught to excel in the classroom, to be better than the others, and to do what we have to do to become number one, to be part of the group, to be part of the world. Pride is exalted as a uh, remedy for being accepted. Pride of life, four statements which kind of sum it up. I can do what I want, anytime I want, anywhere I want, and how much I want. And for those of us that were involved in uh, self-reward, self-gratification, and self-indulgence, we did our best to complete the pride of life cycle within us. Self-reward, self-gratification, and self-indulgence, lust of the flesh. We were feeding our flesh with the worldly pleasures that we thought would 
would bring us into a state of some type of satisfaction. So again, lust of the flesh is self-reward, self-gratification, self-indulgence. One of the reasons we get into self-reward, self-gratification, and self-indulgence is because of the demonic spirits of self-pity. If we wallow in our self-pity, we feel less of a person than we should be. We feel that we've been shortchanged, that we've been taken advantage of, that we've been used, that we've been abused. The demons are setting us up. And then the demons say, well, let's see what we can do to get you out of this uh, pity party that you're in. Let's go do something so we can get out of this. Let's reward ourselves. Alcohol, drugs, immorality, self-gratification, self-indulgence, anything uh, they lead us into this area of self-pity, and then they give us a solution for it, which is another demonic uh, solution, and many of us fell into that, uh, repeated uh, being set up, but not being aware of deliverance, not being aware of demons. I personally came to this church some 24, 25 years ago because I believed I had a cousin who had demonic presence. Why do you think the Lord brought me to this church? Because I was uh, manifesting total demonic presence. But the Lord used my cousin to get me here, uh, which I am very grateful for. Lust of the eye is another area of the, uh, of the pride of life and of the lust of the flesh. It brings us into envy and covetousness, which means we, we can't see another person, uh, even if there, and it happens to Christians. Why is that Christian brother or sister being blessed? I'm the one who's in the limelight. I'm the one who's doing it. They're being blessed, in, and uh, they don't seem to be fulfilling what God has for them to do. And we become envious of our Christian brother and sister. The Word of God tells us, Deuteronomy eleven twenty six. Behold, this day I lay before you a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you keep my commandments and a curse if you don't. All of us sitting here have been blessed by generations other than our own, and some of the blessings came from our own generation. The blessings come down the bloodline like a ball bounces down the steps. It doesn't bounce on each step perfectly. It skips jumps, your brother, your cousin, some member of your family is being blessed. You've all been blessed to a greater or lesser degree by something that your ancestral uh, ancestry has been involved in. Unfortunately, you've also been cursed by your ancestry and by their involvement in sin. But the envy and covetousness, lust of the eye, is something that we have to seek deliverance in and ask God to give us the desire to seek this deliverance. Because covetiveness, uh, even there's Christian covetiveness over the brothers and sisters as to why they're being blessed and maybe we think we're not being blessed. 1 John 3.8, 1 John 3.8, we're told about he that committeth sin, 1 John he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So we're told here that the devil has sinneth from the beginning, and that Jesus Christ was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil which he has destroyed the works of the devil. We've been given his word that we've been given all the power over serpents and scorpions. We have binding and loosening. We have the ability to cast out demons, Mark 16, 17, and 18. Those that believe in my name shall cast out devils. They've all been given to us, but like a check, if I give each individual in here a check for $500, and you don't take it to the bank and sign it, that check is invaluable. 
Many people think they don't have to cash the check, that uh, it's been given to us. Yes, it's been given to us. The, the power has been given to us. The, uh, the availability, the promises have been given to us. But we have to do our part. God won't do our part. God is always doing his part. He will work with us in the things we can't do, but the things that we can do, we must do. Romans 3.23, please. Romans 3.23. We're told about sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I prayed for an individual a couple of weeks ago, and I said... Uh, to the individual, I says, are you having any problems in any areas? He says, oh, no. He says, I don't sin anymore. I said, well, first of all, we, got a, we have a lack of understanding here because uh, we all sin whether we realize it or not. God is not in all of our thoughts, Psalm 10.4. In the pride of his countenance, uh, the scripture says that God is not in all our thoughts, which is where God desires to be. We have to exercise our will to bring God into all of our thoughts. We are slowly bringing this into existence in our mind because prior to our coming to Christ, we had the world in all our thoughts and the pleasures of the world. And who is the prince and power of the world? The devil. So we had a worldly connection in our mind, will, and now we're having a godly connection with Jesus Christ in our mind and will, which is a changeover, a makeover. Uh, makeovers aren't done unless you're watching that TV show, uh, Let Me Change Your House in 24 Hours. And uh, uh, with the Christian, it's a slow process, but it's a true process. And it's a resolving process. And it's a lasting process. And it's a continuing process. So if you think you're delivered completely of everything, uh, then you can get prayer for pride. Because pride is the, what, what exalted Lucifer to be cast out of heaven. And pride is something that uh, when there's nothing else to pray for, pray against pride in ourselves. Because the devil wants us to be exalted just as he thought he had to be exalted and he wants us to exalt ourselves against God that we can stand alone, do it on our own, be responsible for all of our actions and commitments. Turn with me to James 2.10, please. James 2.10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point... He is guilty of all. So I had a student in driver education, and uh, I was trying to bring forth uh, some of the principles of the Word of God. And I says uh, that there's, there's more than Ten Commandments in the Bible. He says, oh, no, I have to disagree with you. I says, oh, whenever God speaks, it's, it's kind of a commandment. It's uh, something we should do or something we shouldn't do. No, there's only Ten Commandments. I says, what church does your family attend? I didn't want to offend him. I said, what church does your family attend? He says, we attend the Roman Catholic Church. I says, well, uh, I'm going to check into that. Uh, I'm glad you know about the Ten Commandments anyway. But uh, I didn't want to pursue it any further because I'm, I'm there to teach driving. I'm not there to instruct on, uh, a, as a religious uh, teacher. James 2.10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. We're going to look tonight at the Ten Commandments. Now, we all know the Ten Commandments. And if, a, if the reward was a million dollars for anyone who could put them all in the perfect ten order, uh, we may have like a lottery situation. Well, or another rollover, and uh, we come back next Thursday and we try it again because... Uh, we all know them, we've heard them, we've tried to memorize them, uh, and for the most part, many of us think we keep them. 
uh, to a greater or lesser degree. So if you would turn with me, please, to Exodus 20, uh, 1 through 17, please. A look at the Ten Commandments is a good way to test ourselves as to whether we have broken God's laws and sinned against Him. Exodus 21 through 7. We're going to look at Exodus 23, please. Thou shalt have no gods before me. Love of selfish pleasure more than God breaks the first. There's other gods that the world has created that we have fallen prey to. The God of money, the God of entertainment, and the God of recreation. The God of recreation has taken hold of most people. Uh, they can only do so much work, they can only be involved in church so much, and then they have to recreate, that they feel they can't work a full work week unless they recreate at some point. Entertainment, we have the TV. Unfortunately, we're being fed by the TV. Uh, worldly knowledge, worldly instruction, worldly behavior, and we need to separate from the world. I was just uh, reviewing myself. Uh, many of us belong to a video store rental place. This, the one I belong to is called Family Video. And uh, the Lord was responding to me and says, yes, it's called family video, but they have different sections in there. They have the children's entertainment, they have the TV serials, and they also have the adult movies there. They put it under the name family, so you say, oh, this shouldn't be so bad. It's family, family-oriented. Now, we wouldn't go to a hospital that works on uh, certain situations but doesn't work on this situation. We would know that that hospital is not doing the right job. They need to take care of everybody, not just a select few. And with these video stores, we have to be selected also that uh, is this really what we want to be carrying in our wallet, that I'm a member of the family video. We don't have to partake of the adult videos in there, but just of knowing that they sell them and we're franchising and participating in that makes us legally uh, involved with that. We're promoting it to a greater or lesser degree. So the Lord is sending conviction towards me. I haven't received the total conviction, but that's to come because now I've got to think about it and to respond to it. The Lord has prompted me to that. Thou shalt make no graven image. Religious adoration for man-made objects breaks the second. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Flippant and hypocritical use of God's name breaks the third. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Careless about the Lord's day and failure to worship him in spirit and truth breaks the fourth. I believe the New Testament, the Lord's day is every day. That we're to be worshiping and praising and each day of the week. Honor thy father and mother. Disrespect, ingratitude, and disobedience to parents breaks the fifth. If we have parents that are still living, we need to try to reach them. We need to forgive them. Uh, we need to bring forth Christ to them. If we're not going to bring Christ to them, who is? We've got members of our family that have, uh, for one reason or another, uh, Honoring thy father and mother will be honoring our brothers and sisters that we've been brought into the fold with. Thou shalt not kill. 
Anger, malicious thoughts, and outward hatred breaks the six because if one hates his brother, he is a murderer. Thou shalt not commit adultery, lustful thoughts in the heart, unfaithfulness, and free sex breaks the seventh. We live in a society of adultery. We live in a society of unfaithfulness, free sex. Uh, we live in this society. We have to be responsible to our children, to our grandchildren, and raising them in the ways and admonition of the Lord by when we have the opportunity to bring forth what God says about these different situations. Thou shalt not steal. Cheating and taking things from others breaks the eighth. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Slanderous statements and gossip breaks the ninth. We may not say this to our neighbor, but we may talk about our neighbor to our other neighbor. Uh, gossip and slander is the devil has subtly worked his way into our speech to we're thinking, well, I'm just giving them some in, added information. God has given you this information to pray about it, not to talk about it. Now, if you're warning him that this neighbor is this type of a person or so forth, uh, that's a different situation. But if we're just bringing forth uh, news, which is called gossip, uh, it breaks the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, wife, or ox. Coveting what another has breaks the tenth. If we covet, we doubt love, we don't love our neighbor as ourselves. Sin and its results. There's a definite uh, action and reaction when we are involved in sin. Romans 6.23 Turn with me, please. Romans 6.23. person may say, oh, I know that scripture. I've heard it a thousand times. Tonight may be the time when you receive conviction because of your obedience to not do what you think you should do as opposed to what God wants you to do. And God would desire you to follow his word that's being brought forth and checking on the preacher so as not to allow him to bring forth error in false doctrine. That's why you bring a Bible to the body of Christ to check on the preacher and also to learn what is in your Bible also. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there's actually a payment that we earn when we involve ourselves in sin. It's death. We have a choice. Somebody asked me once, he says, uh, what's your choice, smoking or non-smoking? I said, well, naturally, uh, at that time I was in the world, I said, smoking's fine. He said, no, I'm talking about your eternal life. Smoking or non-smoking? I go, well, with that, I, I want the non-smoking. He says...